everyone, we are here yet again for another Friday stream from Strange Loop Games. Um, my name is Jens, living in Scandinavia, working for SLG for the better part of three years now. Uh, and with me tonight I have Mike, who is our code master in terms of all things vehicle. Uh, so, do you want to tell us hey, a bit Jens. about yourself? Yeah, so I'm... Mike, as you already said, <laughs> so okay, Quadbro from Chads, and yeah, mostly responsible for the gameplay systems in Eco. So focusing on the physics stuff, on the avatars, all the kinds of stuff with vehicles that you can complain us about. But yeah, mostly. Well, thank you for that. And tonight we have something that. I think everyone has been looking forward to for a long time. I've seen some comments in chat that um, uh, you know th there's been something that's been brewing for a long time. It's been a bit on and off in terms of development time as different subjects have been popping up in prioritization as with everything, um, be it either you know complete rework of the civic system or um, other larger changes to the eco. Uh, environment or um, just in general things that kind of happens in a dynamic development um, especially with a globalized team as well uh, and as said tonight's subject as everyone probably guessed is boats and um, lots of boats lots of boats yes uh, <laughs> we have we have quite a few of them as we um, as you know we've had this cooking for a while and it has been a big subject. Um, it has a big impact. And we didn't just want to sort of leave you in there with, with just a, a small little dinghy or, you know, a paddle boat and um, gonna call it a day. But we really wanted to make sure that we get a large variety of things in where we felt comfortable in terms of how it could potentially impact game balance. Uh, how it can impact the environment um, but also giving you a lot of opportunities to sort of play around with and have more of a, a dynamic world to play in and um, to sort of kick us off a little bit I'll go through some of the um, some of the design parts of it I think um, as some people might be interested in it some people are just here to see fancy boats and hoping that they might fly off in orbit um we'll try to yeah we'll we'll try to so i'm gonna <laughs> i'm gonna switch us into one of my flow charts for when we first started designing and kind of drafting the boats um to sort of see around a little bit of what we needed to cover what we needed to think of uh, when we started really digging into it um in terms of the different areas of impact the terrain water um, crafting and the different kind of components and parts that would make the boats into functional pieces of um, gameplay and as you can see started off with magical boats here and these are color coded based on how we sort of prioritized um, where green is stuff that we kind of really wanted to have bigger investment in terms of time and uh, making sure that you know this is something that we really take a look and how how it how much it's going to impact and um, can go around it a little bit and go with things like uh, introducing boats which would um, be impacted by water physics which means we can't just have something that just plops off the edge like the vehicles do uh, at the moment but these needs to be floating and then if they're floating are they also supposed to be able to bob uh, float around and, and kind of be impacted by different elements um, such as if it's impacted from movement by another boat or by another player um, is it going to be pushed around is it going to be floating how much so on and so forth um, so that's part of the whole collision pieces and then we do went over how to handle boat on boat action um, the physics calculations and the speeds and the mobility impacts um, as well as the different water animals and then some of the requirements that we felt 
as a result of all of those things, we felt that we really needed a way to make sure that the boats are not completely free floating and we have a way of player interaction to make sure that the boats can't just be pushed indefinitely, um, which led us to kind of spawn into the mooring posts that you've seen in, in a previous stream. And parts of what these could comprise of, of and the different requirements that I had on making sure that these fill the role I wanted them in, but also uh, making sure that they weren't too complicated because that's, uh, that's always a hazard when you're adding these different elements um, expansive into gameplay. And then of course something for the placeables and this is where this is where the hazards of game design comes in where you have all of these ideas and there's so many and they can be really creative but also very hard to implement in a smooth um, sort of way in terms of how you interact with them and how you play with them and there's also a lot of technical things like how our world objects works um, in terms of acting out from a vehicular position uh, and to sort of go over this in a fast pace greens were kind of what we really wanted to and the yellows being kind of stretch goals where it would be fun to have it but not necessarily something that we felt that we had time for at the moment and then the red and the purple was stretch goals where we really um, we really have a sort of what we want in some time in the future to give it that extra polish piece um, which you know leaning towards a, a sort of extended run on post staging and, and post 10.0 release um, where we want to do another run on and once we see how they work in game and get feedback from all the players and, and um, how they're used in game yeah in short they're just technical limitations mostly for, for now but yeah they're all solvable in the future yeah and as as mentioned, Mike is our our mastermind physics and vehicle interaction and playability coder. Uh, he, he does all the magic with all the different vehicles. We have a couple of other guys that, that work with in tandem and supporting it, but um, he is our lead lead developers on vehicle. And with that um, I think we're gonna move over to what everyone wants to see, which is Mike's screen share here from. Uh, yeah, finally. Unity. Lots of boring technical stuff first. Yeah, and now, now we get now we got all start. the all the mm -hmm. all the boring technical stuff done. Uh, so we'll switch over to his screen share here, where we have a couple of docs and stuff built up or a little bit around here. Yeah, let's start. So, small little fishing village that we pre-built here. There's all that fancy, fancy new blocks that you would expect in the upcoming updates that you can build on the water, especially. So, yeah, and the new block says all the nice stuff that we have around pre-built for the for the initial start. You can see lots of boats here waiting us for take a ride on. So, yeah. Should we start from the canoes? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, why not? So, let, let's try them, at least. They should work. Yay! Let's pedal to the... some new and fancy stuff that we also added. Yeah. For the bots update. So, for the canoes... Um, and I'm not sure how is is the first person animations rigged up yet. Nope. They they are not. So you're not gonna see that yet. Um, but we have uh, part of part of a design decision here with the canoes was dealing with game versus reality a bit, where you are paddling on the opposite end of where you want to be turning, and really trying to 
have a smooth animation transition in between you going left, you going right, how the forces are applied. And I know this is something that you really dug into um, the last couple of weeks. Yeah, with, with some some amount of efforts to make it feel like a real canoe. But as as it is the like low tier Rico, it would be hardly to control it, to adapt to it, but yeah, that's doable. Let's try the dock here and so show some a little bit bigger thing than just the canoe. And as you probably expected, we are we are still heavily working on this and we have a lot of lot of things to still do and polish with it. Um, there's some icons missing as you can see and um, it's still not really um, uh, we can actually grab a couple of questions here um, ask yeah, let's, the, let's uh, try before I will blow the stuff with the Vico on the barge oh yeah um, we have a question regarding carry cargo carry capacity of the vehicles or in in particular the canoe and from my point on balance things i wanted the canoes to be sort of representative of a similar tech progression as land-based vehicles so you have your small wooden cart you have your large or you have the the wood cart um, where you go from a very very rudimentary early piece where you don't really carry a lot with you but you can carry extra things with you uh, over to being able to carry a moderate amount so the large canoe is kind of equivalent to the wood cart in terms of carry capacity uh, we are also trying to do some some fancy technical things in terms of how this how the material is represented when it's stored in the vehicles um, similar to how you see like small representations of like you know crushed ore or logs um, laying inside the, the carts and um, so the canoes will have a carry capacity but yeah but they are not designed to fit like all of these truck contents into it no there are special types for this so onward to a vehicle we haven't really shown um, th there's been well, we've been a GIF and, and some sneak peeks on it, but we've shown you the wooden counterpart, and this is the later stages industrial version of a barge, which has amazing animations and looks really nice in my opinion. Yeah, let's grab this track onto the barge. Yeah, it's not exploded yet. <laughs> it is fine. And as you can see, it is quite a big vehicle. And the boats in general are pretty pretty substantially <laughs> big. We'll, we'll see how well this works in terms of moving things around. It was working. What did you say? Works? <laughs> we, had, we had sinking potential in there somewhere. Um, yeah, it was a rough departure from the from that side. Yeah, we're, we are yeah. We, we are still experimenting with things like the weight ratios and um, in particular something that plagues a lot of game uh, games with multi vehicle functionalities where oh movement no. we hit something. Uh, uh, where movement is impacted by other vehicles movements or players so say for example you jump up in the back of a truck and you have the truck going um, the momentum is carried for the player by the vehicle and then when he jumps off the car or the truck he's now in the player motion and momentum so that causes that causes a potential jitter in where the, the the client has to recalculate how fast you're moving or how fast you can move. Um, yeah, and we also need to admit that currently there are 
like very minimal limitations to vehicles supplied that are placed on the barge. So we are essentially trying to simulate how, how it behaves like in real physics environment. You can see there is some jitter on the on the vehicle. But if we will like somehow apply some forms of connections or just fix it onto the barge that wouldn't have any problem to, to transfer it. That was just for a hope that it will explode and you'll see the truck that launches to space. Yeah, and it, it is also, I think part of the issue we ran in there from the docks is that we are running quite shallow. Um, yeah. The, the draft we... depth of this boat is like three and a half tiles almost. Um, so it is running quite deep, and the the current world yen can I show the ocean? Yeah, no, I think I can you need. Show it. Yeah, well, we can jump off it and um, show the draft depths because that was that was another question someone had here as well with the draft depth of the different vehicles. Yeah, uh, you can see the depth is not too like sea like in. In this case, it's more like a river. Yeah, which is which is also bringing up to a point with world generation and something that will likely cause. Uh, while you can migrate worlds, I should say, um, it is more than likely that it's recommended to start a fresh world in ten, due to just the nature of the changes, as they're gonna be a bit of a shake up in terms of like the general depth of the um, uh, the oceans versus the deep ocean and um, probably sizing of the rivers and, and some other small minor world adjustments that will um, inherently not transfer over to uh, an existing world. I probably should extend my turn radius for this one. <laughs> Possibly, yeah. probably, but this this is also depicting a good a good presentation of problems for uh, for for building a larger for, yeah for for larger vehicles in general as the boats are well this is this is one of our our widest boats I should say um, it is pos it is creating an infrastructural issue in terms of if you want to have a canal like this built, it requires it to be wide and probably a less, a lot more friendly on its turns rather than the one I built for Mike here. Um, yeah, that's as he is colliding on the front, he's drifting with his rear, which is causing him to misalign. It's like really pixel to pixel to drive in. Yeah, that's. That would be a hard one. Probably I need to take a bigger, bigger curve and fit it straight. And as we but can, as we can still in. Oh yeah, it 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 hasn't exploded yet, which is a good sign. But it's it really is low depth here. Yeah, I I believe the I believe the keel is causing some issues. I might have I might have not dug it deep enough. Oh, hey. there we go. We are getting yeah, it. was a really hard one. It's reminiscent of the cargo blockade of the Panama Canal here, a couple of months back. <laughs> yeah. Uh, where one one ship being stuck causes everything to just halt and not get anywhere. Um. As for some more questions, um, we have one regarding boat progression. Uh, from canoe to engine, uh, combustible, I'm presuming, is the reference to electrical. Um, right now, all all boats are ran either on uh, combustible or uh, physical power. So either you're spending calories by uh, paddling or you know, canoeing, um, or it goes into oh no. uh, solid fuel, such as coal, wood, um, over into liquid fuels, which is what this monstrosity is using. And the 
the boat crafting and the balance around them. Uh, we had a we had a previous stream about that, but they have their own profession. They have their own crafting stations as shipyards. We have the bigger one placed in front. Are you completely stuck there, or did you get stuck no, no. in the buoy? You drifting? I just want to show the buoys for. Ooh, like that, it's that, that, that the car is range. the car is sliding yeah. down. This one? Yeah, it, it's it's got it's the. It's fine. Um, it's fine. Um, so with the morning posts, as we we touched on them earlier in um, in the aforementioned stream, but we didn't go into too much of their technicality, and the buoy is inherent to the same functionalities as the moorage posts, where you can hoist your vehicle and freeze it and make sure that it doesn't run away or can be pushed around um, as a griefing a griefing can protection. I one work here. Yeah. Yeah, let's try it. No, probably the steel one. Oh yeah, we I, I need to change out the... Um, so both buoys can anchor any ship. Because right now the plastic buoy is set to only allow small boats. By the way, I'm in danger. You are in Slowly danger. Slowly drifting next to me. You're fine. That That's what those bars are for. Making sure you don't get run over when you're transporting vehicles. Uh, but as you can see, the, it is quite big, um, which also means that it can transport multiple vehicles and something that we were poking on, um, as someone probably noticed on the flowchart, is the whole idea of overloading a boat and making it either inoperable due to overweight or sinking outright, um, which could be interesting, but it also, it also presents the player with a, an issue of having to be able to recover vehicles or multiple vehicles with a lot of cargo on them and um, it is another thing that we're technically uh, we're working on from a technical point and if we do change something in it it'll probably be on a stream um, eventually um, Weight capacities on the boats, yes, but only for cargo, um, as part of the the mention. Well, it will definitely sink if you will put two excavators on on this thing. Oh yeah, and that is that is part of balance issues where kind of need to find adjust to make sure that we reach a moderate amount that we're happy with. I don't think I will fit the... You're fine. Deploy it and see what happens. Yeah, see? It it, it fit like a glove. I will probably try to mortgage it before... You have one on the left there as well. Oh yeah, it's even closer. But that one is not claimed. Yeah. Let's so, the way the mortgage posts works is that as soon as you have a boat in range, you'll have that it'll pop up as a checkbox at the moment we'll see if we do something more gracious about um, the interface and then that will connect the boat to a moorage point on the model and it'll make sure that the vehicle is no longer movable and it is fairly safe to drive off on i tried with the ramp i i really did i think the the gap of difficulties on can, every can, step can you reverse on it if you turn the vehicle around on the boat, I'm not sure, but I definitely can stuck here Be because it's a rear wheel drive. Yeah. Although if you leave the truck there and then you unhitch the boat and then move the boat out, what will happen with the truck? Just move the boat or yeah, just yeah, close yeah, the barge doors? Um, you can probably just close the barge doors. It's your decision, not mine. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Hey, there we go. We are fine. Um, oh no. As for the question regarding automated ferries, um, that is not something that we're really looking into as um, 
what are you stuck on? On this ramp you built in here? Oh yeah. See, we need we need a four wheel drive truck. That's what we need. I'm not sure you tested this. It worked with the steam truck. Um, even diagonal. Not help. I, I'm not even sure what he's stuck on at this point. Uh, he's the one driving, by the way, and not me. I uh, have another idea how to park this thing. <laughs> Ergo, and I extend it out and use it as and and fly you know, out with it. A lot simpler. Because we will sink too much time on trying to hit the parking parking lot. We just. Oh, come on. Almost. But that's fine. We, we I even stuck with the <laughs> with the environment. But yeah. Uh, this is a good example on why we test things and make sure that they don't they're not delivered in this state to players. Uh, because this could be a general frustrating experience I believe. No. Um but let's move over to something that um, was mentioned here as well with we we teased a bit with the model it's been a long time coming but it's finally actually in game and drivable which is the fishing boat yeah it's nearly as, as big as the barge mm -hmm. but has different purposes so this is another another vessel and as you can see he's driving it without fuel um, it's not really using fuel. It, it, not, it doesn't have a fuel consumption at the moment. Um, it is it is combustion fuel operated, so it is coal or wood, and so on. And as you can also see, this is why I need to make some world gen changes because it is a bit shallow. Um, yeah, we'll we'll drive to a bit more deeper place. Um, someone had a question about the red arm on the barge and the red arm on the barge currently doesn't do anything but we do have some plans for it to act as um, a crane and or also be able to be interchangeable with an excavator bucket um, opening it up the, pos the, the possibility to do things like dredging or building or dumping or, or interacting with general material along the coastlines and along rivers um, which is something that we really want to see players be able to do and um, we have a plan for it it's just not ready yet yeah sure I think we're deep enough to I believe so there's something going there. Let's let's do it. Yeah, come on guys. I'm gonna test you. So something Mike did to be able to properly test the fishing trawler. Um well you can probably see what's going on. Uh, this yeah, is lots of fancy stuff. Uh, and, and this is how you repopulate the ocean after a global catastrophe. Um, no, so you know, as as with any development, we add um, general commands to kind of assist and test things that are necessarily not necessarily easily testable um, in outside certain environments, and being able to like quickly fill up the trawler ship or f quickly be able to test and see if you can catch all types of fish um, he added a command to just spawn a whole bunch of random random assorted fish and they are going crazy here it goes so for functionality wise um, as you can see it's looking pretty and what we had in mind for the boat when we first looked at it we wanted it to have 
one we wanted it to be sort of economical um, reusable where uh, similar to how we added durability to this the, the steam tractors components we would add something in the lines of that for the fishing boat and here you can see that he, he fished up a whole bunch and dropped into its inventory and as you can see in the storage we now have a bunch of fish in there which you, which you did not have to hand reel in every single one and the um, we have some plans for the technical things about fishing because right now they're working on a collider level wh which is the fish needs to actually be caught by the trawler net and collide with it so you need you can't just hoist it down into the water and just let it park there and you would get a whole bunch of fish you actually need yeah that's why we did a preset up for for all those fish species because it would be harder in the real environment because you wouldn't be able to keep to catch as much fish like that easy but yeah works yeah so the, the fishing boat is intended to have nets as replacement modular parts both an early stage one and a later stage one um, for a more durable experience and we are looking at just generally where we land on in balance where where we take a look at how much fish can you catch uh, do we, is there something that we want to drain over time just by moving regardless if you're catching a fish or not and yeah so there, there's a lot of design decisions in there and a lot of balance uh, revolving the economy and then how you're interacting with it um, as for technical limitations we are looking at um, improving it a little bit with not just having it collide because that's very dependent on how the ecosystem is working and how the animals are respawning uh, as there was there is an inherent risk of say you're draw you're trawling along a coastline and you empty that coastline of fish and then the inherent population kind of crawls back or versus just respawns in that environment so you basically do the same track back and forth yeah, I think we can possibly like organize stuff to work together. So that would be a nice addition to hunt for some species with the collider part and just to be able to passively catch and fish despite they're not like rendered right here in in such amounts like like those. Yeah, and that that also gives us more of a control over the efficiency of the fishing boat versus someone that is actively chasing large schools of fish where one might only catch a moderate amount while someone that is spending more time and getting accustomed to the nautical waters um, be able to catch a lot more um, we're also experimenting a little bit with um, having a the depth setting for the boat um, in terms of being able to trawl at different depths as you can see when you're only when you're trolling at the moment you're only good doing it sort of on the surface or along the, s the the first three tiles deep ocean and we kind of want to give the opportunity to also do like deeper trolling um, but it's something that's still in the experimental stages and uh, something with that we'll, we'll see what makes it out when um, in times of um, the staging build and the first initial play testing or if this is something that we expand on um, further down the line and, and like post 10.0 release yeah uh, well that's mostly it for the demonstration how it all works yeah we did, like uh, mostly successful stuff with the truck but yeah showed the thing fishing will be will be more interesting, more like deep engaged for the fishery and all the fishermen professions. 
yeah, that's kind of nice addition. Yeah, we got a uh, couple of more questions to round out with. Um, after that, we'll uh, we'll see if we can't convince Mike here to to give a brief check into the technical parts of um, the modding section yeah, of it. So yeah, I also found some questions in chat. Can I proceed yeah, with them? Yeah, go. Yeah, so if the sea rises, will boat ri rise as well? Yeah, sure. So boat is tied to the water itself. So if you will pollute your world and the sea will will be higher as usual, the boats will be higher too. That's only dependent on the water layer. And for... Oh, gents, we forgot about wooden transport ship. Oh yeah, yes, that we did. Holy moly! Can we show it? Yeah, yeah, yeah we can show it. I think that that one has been present in in some of the um, some of the community. Um, the the RP community has been using it um, for their uh, their general ship usage. So some people have, might have already seen it. Um, we've also shown a couple of images with it. But the to deal with general freighting. Um, and larger goods transportations. We've got the wooden, uh, medium wooden transport boat. I think it's called at the moment. Yeah, something like that. And this is gonna be, when it comes to naval shipping, this will be kind of your bread and butter at the moment. Which kind of it, it's kind of bleak comparatively when it's sitting there right next to, um, uh. <laughs> right next to the uh, the big barge and the um, fishing trawler. Um, that is that is. Um, there we go. But yeah, so this has a moderate, a moderate sized compartment. It'll be somewhere in the line on in in the um, this the the modern truck area. It'll probably have a little bit larger compartment as it's a naval transport. Yeah, but it definitely gives more speed and like more fluent controls. Like it's a lot easier to control it than bar than, than barge or trawler. We did not see that collision. Let's ignore it. That blame this shark for that. Yeah. It's not me. The the boats are currently not falling under the same uh, animal um, avoidance as the land vehicles, so they're they're currently colliding with the sharks. But that's a that's a that's a current slight issue. Um, yeah, that's it. Uh, also, we have a we have a whole a whole bunch of questions here. Um, you can, and that's actually something that we might want to be doing. Um, someone was asking about the small the small shipyard, as that wasn't um, that model wasn't rigged up with the addressables last time. Um, so you can probably spawn that in. Probably. That so the, the thing on the left here um, is the medium shipyard. I uh, renamed it from its former iron shipyard uh, preliminary yeah. name. So now they're called small yeah. shipyard and medium shipyard. And the medium shipyard is kind of where you build your larger vessels that comes into the area of mechanical and industrial. Uh, the shipyard is one word. There it works. Should no, be. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Or is it not placeable? Is it placeable? Or are you too far away from it? Nope. It's not placeable yet. It doesn't want to. It doesn't. Yeah, we can just show the preview. Uh, <laughs> you could do slash spawn small shipyard. It'll spawn it inside the building. Yeah, it'll it'll spawn it inside a building, but that's fine. So the, the 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 medium shipyard is intended to have a requirement of water adjacent to it, while the small shipyard is something that you can you know kind of your backyard, hobby style sized almost. Um, it clips a little bit due to how the spawn command works, but here we al we can also see the crafting animation for it. Yeah, it's how the canals are made. Yeah, and this is where you build your smaller boats. Um, 
such as the canoes and uh, the small ones. Uh, then we have boats. Can can boats be used in rivers or only in the ocean? And I believe for river traversing, that question probably falls more to you, Mike. Well, currently we have no physics for for streams in the river, but yeah, even with current implementation, you can swim in river in canoes in small wooden boats with no problem at least you don't want to go like upside to the opposite side of the river but yeah if i can find some rivers here i can show i'm not sure i will but yeah probably we showed canoe let's go for the small wooden boat no, yeah, now that we have, um, it's been seen before, but now it has a little bit more polish to it. It has some, some effects and um, it's looking a lot nicer. Oh, that's a nice river here. It's literally flat. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's fine. Um, and as a, as a profession, Craftable profession question comes in here with the boats as well. Yes, there is a new profession for them, and it is shipwright, and it is a technologically coming in around the same time as uh, slightly earlier than basic engineering, somewhere between carpentry and, and basic engineering. And most of the initial canoes are built from uh, intermediary parts and. Uh, things were around logging and then um, the small wooden boat as you see uh, him paddling around in now has a little bit more technical part so that's more towards um, as, an, as a medium improved personal transport which comes in parts from basic engineering and mechanics uh, with some iron iron and some gears so yeah probably people asking about the can I traverse some like waterfalls like this one probably i could but things can explode i think down is probably not an issue yeah it works uh, but, up but it works. won't work too, too good as for upside movement yeah yeah this boat is my favorite one it's so easy to control it just before because of the pedals stuff but yeah it, i wouldn't be able to to go upside yeah i know this is something that on the water physics questions there's a lot of people that are wondering about uh, changes to moving water or interacting with water um, unfortunately it's not really something that uh, we've had the time for um, for 10.0 but we do want to have more of a liquid um, a bit more easily interactable liquids um, as and and also smoothen this out a bit where you know instead of having these weird one block waterfalls we would have them ebb out a lot more over more tiles uh, and kind of be a bit more natural looking yeah, and speaking of the more natural look, when it will be like so, the boat will definitely look better on the waterfalls, and probably even some with some additions to the boats that have power, like the wooden transport ship, like trawler, they they could pass such difficulties in the in the difference of height between water blocks because currently they are too too blocky for for the boats to like we can do this but that would look not as as you expect it to be yeah so yeah, that's why we have such limitations uh, do we have any other interesting questions coming in here that 
last take in. Um, are fish going to be used in more recipes? Because we already have stockpiles of fish we don't use in existing versions. Yes. Um, I am looking over um, sort of similar to how Butchery deals in uh, different types of meat sorts um, when it comes to scrap meat and prime cuts and, and so on. Um, I am looking at um, getting something in between there with processing the fish into different parts and making it a little bit more interactable rather than just you know add a tuna to a stew and then that's it or say the pacific sardines that everyone loves for their pizzas uh, so that's something that we are uh, we're, we're looking into it and probably will happen um, as to what extent we'll we'll just have to uh, see what we uh, bring in with the update Yeah, any questions left? Uh, one technical for you in terms of physics with uh, a question regarding canal locking and, and force elevating water, which is another water physics, um, kind of like the, the, the Panama Canal, for instance, like a water elevator, essentially. So you're asking, is this possible? Or? I think it's a general. Um, on the subject of the whole waterfall thing where you have different elevations in water height um, and kind of what the technical possibilities are for solving that in uh, you know even if we ebb out and, and have it like a, a, a nice curved slope where you can ascend them uh, but more for a say you want to drive uh, a fishing boat over in a canal that needs to cross over a mountain. Well, yeah, some kind of water elevators are probably interesting thing to think about because, yeah, they they wouldn't be just spawning the blocks in the world, but some kind of a like emulating and animating the water inside it, and it will just elevate your boat up and down. But they will be just like replaced like in look of the industrial elevator, something like that. But for the water canals and other stuff, yeah, sounds sounds nice. To something something similar in, in uh, something in the likes of say uh, a, a giant fish tank, which would go up and down, and you would just open up one side and. Uh, assuming there is water on that side and you can pass in the vehicle um, it is something that is interesting and I think it's definitely something that we can look into uh, but we, we uh, we're not gonna make any promises uh, in regards to kind of create the logistical solutions to them at this stage yeah definitely um, there was one regarding boat speed here. Uh, see if I can find it again. Uh, do, 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 do. We have a lot of a lot of questions about boats, um, and that one. Thank you, Dennis. Uh, how do all the different boat speeds compare to each other and? to land vehicles, which I'm assuming is kind of land vehicle equivalent, so the medium transport versus the, the steam truck in the truck, or the canoes versus um, the um, uh, the carts. Oh, that's probably, like visually it very depends on the weight of the vehicle, because we can expect like large industrial barge ride the same speed as as probably even trawler and yeah that's also limitations about the what boat is responsible for because you you don't need like 
large speeds for the barges, but you do for the medium transport ship to, for example, took people from one place to another quickly. But also that is very dependent on your progression. So usually boats will speed up as you progress, the same as the ground vehicles, I suppose. Yeah, nice. And then we have, then we have a um, someone asking for a friend about: Are you able to use the canoe on land? Well, it can be placeable, but not usable. So there is there is no way we're gonna paddle our way forward in in the desert no. dunes. No. <laughs> Sand is not acting like water, so no chance. Uh, any plans for sailing ships, age of sails, or modern sailboats? Um, I think yeah, it's you more up to you. Yeah, I I think from from a general perspective, it would be nice to see uh, this this kind of you know giving it a little bit more ambience in with you know big sailboats or or even small sailboats just to kind of speedy go forward. But um, at the same point, it's also something that we are uh, both from an from an economical impact and, and like balance perspective. Uh, we do want to have an incentive to you know, constantly use force. And while when you're paddling, for instance, or you know you're you're chucking along gears with the smaller boats, and you're using hand power, uh, we can just have a calorie consumption rate for it versus when you have the bigger steamboats or uh, liquid burning diesel monstrosities uh, it has a fuel requirement whereas this would be very little impacted in terms of sailing boats while i do know that sailing is a pretty physical endeavor um, in terms of all all things considerate with um, managing it uh, I think from a gameplay perspective, it also it feels a bit weird if you're gonna spend the same amount of calories on something that has a giant sail rather than just paddle. Uh, so it's and also it would be weird if the boat with sail will will be riding at smaller speed than your hand powered ones, but they definitely would be. So there are not only balance limitations, but also technical ones that those boats will be look less um, less durable than we got others. A couple of questions. Um, one being container ships and cargo freighters. And I believe we have we have some ideas and prospects towards uh, you know modern shipping and, and modern containing boats um, in the future but not included for ten. And it also leads me into another question of uh, being able to, or rather, vehicles being a permanent world object rather than an item you can pick up and place down uh, kind of willy nilly, and how far um, we would be from not being able to do that anymore. And I think that's an interesting question because we are. We have talked about it a bit uh, from from a design point where when you build a boat for instance it would pop out in the world and have this like little crafting area behind the dockyard and then you would you know if you want to sell it you would sell that boat that is placed in the world and we're not there at the moment um, but it is something that we are looking at and a, a small part of that system is potentially coming out and, and a critical part of the settlements um, due to some technical limitations that we have there um, but I think that's a, a deeper design subject that can go on for, for another hour or so I think we'll Yeah, talking about the big design subject but I, I'm really sure that modders will add it in a few weeks after the release Oh yeah yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be surprised. That would be big container ships. Any other stuff? Um, shopping carts on barges, where we freeze the shopping carts when they open their store, 
and I think that's not possible because of the barge isn't counted as solid ground so you wouldn't be able to open up the shop cart on it yeah right uh, as a summary of how many boats that we are adding in 10.0 uh, we've got the small canoe we have the medium or the large canoe we have the small wooden boat and then we have the medium transport that you saw us huffing around in and then we got the wooden barge the industrial barge and the fish trawler so that is what eight i think seven eight i i have so much I, I have so many other boats in my head that i'm thinking <laughs> about so I'm, I'm not even sure at this point anymore i've been drowning in boats the last couple of months uh Fishing traps improving or turning obsolete with the boats update? That's an interesting question, but very probably easy to like divide it to stages. Like trawler is not available for you when you're just starting to play it, and that's probably can be the answer. So they replace each other. Yeah, I, I think the, the fishing traps are. As we talked about how the whole fishing system works, um, we are wanting to sort of ramp it up into also add a layering where it just feeds off the population of the animals that are in the vicinity, the rather than the explicit um, the explicit object itself. So right now, uh, to summarize it, the fishing trawler needs to connect with the entity or the fish that it wants to catch. So once it hits a fish, bam, that fish is in the the cargo hold and the fish traps works in the same way so a fish needs to physically pass the trap in order to be caught by it which is something that we want to expand on and also work towards the habitability and the population of the area so this would also kind of hap be happening in the background rather than being strictly limited to to how the ai pathing works uh, to give us more control and as an end result, it would improve the fishing traps. Uh, oh yeah, do you, do you wanna do you wanna show them the wooden barge just to just to complete the set of the the vehicles? Oh, it's it works like the same as this one, just in a wooden style. I'm sure, not sure we have place here to put another water we go here so let's probably skip it for now uh, we got two questions left I think that we're gonna uh, that is kind of relevant to to this part um, one being will spawn spawning points change so you need to sail further away from shore um, for certain fish or depletions and overfishing in some areas and not others. I believe this is kind of falling under animal behavior and the, an the, uh, the animal ecosystem in general. Um, spawning points and spawning system has been changed with 10 and that will be showed off in the settlements epic uh, stream where we go through all, all of the all of the kind of uh, player impacted changes to him where uh, as you've seen with the avatar creation from the start um, you pick your spawn point it's not a random thing unless server admins opt for it um, but it's more of that in in the settlement epic uh, as for the second one we've got will there will we be having workable lift or draw bridges for these taller boats to fit under without having to build crazy ramps um, or cra oh, crazy height ramps. Uh, I think we can say that we don't have any drawbridges planned uh, at the moment. I'm just showing the height of the trawler. <laughs> <laughs> but it is an extremely um, good question because it, 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 upped, it, it opens up for some other um some other difficulty things that we are looking at as well 
Um, and we also had a question about oil platforms being, uh, or wondering if oil platforms are planned. And um, it's a tricky one where right now we just have the static ground oil pump or the pump jack. Um, but oil in its entirety needs its own kind of rework and um, we would do it a disservice, um, just sort of briefly pointing on it because it needs a, a, a bigger scaled rework in in terms of everything from the oil, from the point of oil to, you know, plastic or finished electronics or whatever you do with it. Um, last, or second last thing, last thing for me, I think, uh, for the stream that we want to go over is there's been a lot of questions and a lot of points on how to make boats more valuable or more, um, shouldn't say valuable, but more essential. Um, and some of the things that we've opted to do as um, alternative configuration settings for the server side is, um, as you can see, Mike's popping up the, the server GUI here. And what we've added for testing out and uh, evaluating is a couple of new config settings to one um, change out the swimming speed so this will be this is a factor that reduces or increases depending on what your server wants to do you can have super speedy marathon swimmers if you want um, we've isolated the swim speed away from the general player movement so this is something that is now changeable on the server side which allows you to modify how fast you're swimming in the different biomes. And the second part is tweaking out and changing out to set how much calories are being consumed when you're swimming in these areas. And part of that was to give an incentive to kind of really show that um, rather than you know you just being able to infinitely swim all across everywhere and just know slap things in your inventory and run with them we give servers an ability to, to tweak that and make uh, boats more of a uh, valued commodity and something that players really would want to get and use um, over just running and the third thing being allow ocean building and I think this is going to be our most controversial settings which is as you can see it is a server config setting so you can change it and tweak it to fit your community or your specific server and this will outright prevent you from building across oceans um, it's currently a bit uh, currently a bit um, rudimentary so right now it'll just outright prevent everything which is making making dock building a bit of a problem but we are trying to hammer out the finer details of it um, so if you do test this out in staging please let us know what your opinions are on it and what you feel like we can do with it to change it and then we also have enable swimming restrictions and what this will do is it will prevent you from being able to swim when you're out of calories so when you run out of calories it will teleport you to the nearest point of land and uh, you can probably show how that looks so if you flip that to true and then you just go out in the ocean and then do a slash work do i need to uh, some of this yeah just dump out whatever calories you have And then this also has its own tutorial segments that pops up if you have it enabled on your server. Um, but yeah, so this will this will outright prevent you from swim, um, which can have uh, can have interesting impacts. And we would love to hear your feedback on it and what you think of it. Uh, and yeah, but at least it can be fully configurable. So if you prefer the styles with restrictions. And yeah, just don't want to let people like block the oceans, build on the like cross the bridges, etc. You can restrict or allow that, no problem. 
but yeah, currently lots of design cho choices to yep and to pick up. for the difficulty settings um, we also have a section of them in the survey so please fill those out uh, and give us as much feedback as as you can um, as this is a big impacting element of the players um, and we really love hearing hearing people's opinions and kind of tweaking where we want the default settings to be so this is not necessarily something where you know add a whole bunch of new settings or remove remove the settings that are available um, but part of um, what you think would be fitting for kind of the default experience of the game and what you would like to see servers have on an average set uh, and that probably wraps up the general boat gameplay um, we have some technical stuff from Mike uh, as the boats are using our own custom in-house built controller and physics handling also means that in comparative to the RCC that we're using for land vehicles uh, this allows us to extend this out to the mod kit and um, modders do not need the dev tier kit to be able to add boats yeah that's why i was pre previously talking about that the any type of board that the community will want to add will be appearing as short as after the release because all the systems will be included in the default mod kit and all you need is just to pack the object with components you want so and yeah, that will work out of the box. The modding for at least ships will be provided. And we also want to mention that we plan to migrate current system for the land vehicles as well to, to our own solution. And modding ground vehicles will become easy too. That's at least how our plan is looking on this one. And that's probably like a big pleasure to just pick in the components and set up your own vehicle prototype without even like touching the code because all the functionality is separated from the, it's not like one vehicle controller that controls a bunch of stuff and you're limited in, in all the things. You will be able to extend like any vehicle functionality as you want. That, that's probably amazing like adding all those custom controls, custom animations, custom whenever you want. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure I need to like dive deep into like showing the components, but I think we can, we can, we can, we can maybe perhaps if people want to um, look into, if we want to do like a mod kit stream, um, to, to kind of show off some of these things once they're in a more complete packaged state. Um, yeah, even probably set it, set up a vehicle on the stream. That would be nice. Yeah, so we can we can do like a, a preset for setting up like a test land vehicle and a test water vehicle um, once we have those kind of migrated and set out. The land vehicle changes to the mod kit obviously are not in for 10, uh, but it is something that we are planning to extend out and make sure that we move away from the current land solution to have our own which allows us a, a lot more control and a lot more um, yeah, and also we'll, we'll have some community feedback how the board components well and how they appreciate modding or not is it easy or we need to add something to the mod kit yeah yeah, yeah no, I nice think stuff. I think that's that's a good end point um, I hope everyone has been having a good time and got a lot of the questions answered. Um, probably missed a few. Uh, unfortunately, can't get everyone. But as always, you know you can reach us. You can reach us over on Discord and um, general social social platforms that we have, either on YouTube or on Discord, as I said, or uh, via Steam forums or whichever kind of entry point um, that you like and you prefer to use. And we will see you on 
the next stream which is around the same time on next Friday and yeah I think that's it for tonight thank you Mike for coming mm, in here thank you Jasper.